How much is it? Two ten. Two ten? Can you show me a card before I decide? <laughs> I'll show you one of these. Can you show me one? Uh, <laughs> yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. What's up everyone? My name is Gary Blackwood, also known as Gazzy one 123 Welcome to the fourth edition of the Gazzy Bay Poker Vlog. Uh, before we get into today's session, I want to talk about a couple of things. First things first, the King-9 offsuit from last week. Uh, really grateful for everyone that's uh, given their feedback and told me how they would play it. It was a what would you do situation. Uh, the results of the hand, I went all in. My opponent tanked for about two minutes and eventually made the fold. Sort of tells us we had the best hand when he's tanking that long. Uh, even though my opponent didn't call, I still think shoving is the best option when you've got an SPR of 1 on the river and you're in position. I think just going all in is by far the best option. Obviously, if we're in a position, we can do some one thirty and stuff, but that's another discussion for another day. Uh, on that note, guys, I just want to say a quick thank you to everyone that's tuned in so far, anyone that's liked or subbed or commented or shared or tweeted. I'm super grateful. Obviously, we're in the early stages of growing this channel, but I'm very confident we can make it to the tippy top. So thank you to everyone that's done that so far. Let me check my wee list here to see what I've got to talk about next. Made it to LA. Um, we are in LA for the next three or four weeks, and then we're going to Vegas for two months. I'm really happy to be back in LA. I haven't been here since before the COVID era. It's been three years since I got to play in LA, and I'm really enjoying being back so far. It is roasting hot, and being from the north of Scotland, uh, I'm burned already, but it's uh, I wouldn't have it any other way. It's been fantastic. Um, the Hustler Casino in LA have given me permission to film, and I'm really grateful to them for doing that. They've been very friendly and supportive. Give me a little media pass. I can get my camera out of the table. Everyone at the table is loving it. They're asking questions and showing bluffs to the camera and stuff like that. The action in LA has always been very friendly. Um, so big shout out to everyone that's, that's said hello at the table so far. Um, so as I said, we're playing in the Hustler Casino for this session. We're playing 5-5, five, five, although when I'm under the gun, it's 5-5-10 it's five, five, a lot of the time. Um, uh, let's talk about the Hustler Casino real quick. And I'm not just saying this because they've given me the opportunity to, to vlog, but the casino is lovely on the inside, lovely on the outside too, but really nice, really elegant on the inside. The poker games are great, lots of good action, a lot of different games. And one thing I like about the Hustler Casino is that even though we're all poker players and poker is a game of skill, they still allow us to gamble sometimes. There are other casinos in LA where you can't straddle, you can't do bomb pots. If you want to do like a flip or one hand a PLO, they flat out refuse. And even though it is a skill game, sometimes you want to just be a bit of a degenerate and gamble it up and do a PLO double board bomb pot once once every or couple of orbits or whatever. And the Hustler Casino allows that. It is a casino that is run with common sense as opposed to strict, no, you can't straddle under the gun rules. I'm so it's, it's really awesome, really loving it so far. Uh, this session was played about three or four days ago. Today is the 26th of April. I am going back in tomorrow uh, to play 5 5 10. They've got a scheduled 5 5 10 game with DGAF Poker. Um, so stick around later this week. Hopefully, we'll be releasing episode number five of the vlog. I think that's all from me. Without further ado, let's get into today's session. It's our very first hand at the new table, and of course we straddle, we pick up pocket eights, action folds around to the small blind, he calls the five, the big blind makes it 50, I call, the small blind folds, and we're heads up to a flop on our very first hand of the night. We're not exactly in love with that ace, but it's certainly not a terrible flop for us. We've got backdoor straight draw, backdoor flush draw, we can have the best hand a lot of the time, it's a very easy continue for us. My opponent takes his time before eventually betting out $140. Really close spot here. I don't have any reads on my opponent. As I say, it's my very first hand of the night. It feels really marginal, but I think without reads, this is completely fine to just go ahead and call. We've got the gut shot. We can still have the best hand. I think just calling and deciding what to do on the river is the best option. My opponent checks the river, I quickly check back, our hand is way too strong to bluff, he tells me I'm good, I show the pocket eights, and as the old saying goes, it's always good to win the first one. Next up we've got an ever so slightly blurry king jack offsuit under the gun, we've opened to $20, hijack is called and cut off is called as well, pretty good flop for us, I go ahead and see bet, hijack folds, cut off makes the call. 
I think our hand plays well as a check on the turn. I don't have any reads on my opponents. If he's a massive calling station, then betting is obviously fine. But I think I go king, queen, ace, king, and all my sets in two pair here. I check, my opponent checks back, and we get the queen of spades river, so the back door flush comes in. I think our hand is definitely strong enough to bet. I bet $110. My opponent snaps me off. We show the king jack. He taps the table, and we drag in our second pot of the night. Oh, 15. Next up, we look down at ace-10 of spades in the big blind. The straddle is on this hand. A kid has opened to 25. There's been a call in MP. I've squeezed to 125. Only the kid calls and we're heads up to the flop. This is a flop that's both really good for our hand and for our range, so we should be doing a ton of betting here. However, this kid loves to bluff. He's been caught with his hand in the cookie jar a few times, so I think checking on over to him and letting him do his thing is absolutely fine. I check, he bets, I put on my, oh, I don't really love that ace face, and make the call. The turn is an absolute dream. We've got top two and the nut flush draw. I check. My opponent shoves for about 500 bucks. I snap call. I see the look on his face and I know that he's virtually drawing dead. So I just turn my cards over. I'm a big fan of if you've got a really strong hand or your opponent gives an indication that you're good, just go ahead and turn your cards over. I do just that. He mucks and we scoop in a really nice pot. Thank you. Thank you. You guys have already seen what happens in this hand in the intro. In my defense, I was typing in all the notes from the Ace-10 suited hand in my phone so I could remember them when making the vlog. Hijack is opened. I've called on the button with Ace-4 of hearts. The big blind is snuck in there without me seeing. The straddle's gone all in for $210. It folds around to me. I'm a big fan of having fun at the table. If we're a heads up, I think this is completely fine to just show a four as I'm mucking. But obviously with another player in the pot, this is absolutely horrific for me. Fortunately, everyone at the table was super Super friendly, the dealer was okay with it, and I didn't get kicked out of the game. I'm really sorry. Next up, we're in the straddle, and we look down at Queen-9 offsuit. A looser player opens in the hijack. A very tight player calls in the button, and I defend my straddle. Now, calling heads up would not be very good here versus the looser player in the hijack, but when you factor in the button is called as well, this is a really poor call preflop from me. We're super dominated by both players' ranges, and when there are more players in the pot, your equity goes down. However, I don't care. I'm in here to defend my straddle. I'm not going to let people steal it. I go ahead and make the call, and we see a flop. 30. Action checks right to the button and she stabs out for $30. We've got top pair, there's nothing else we can do here. We make the call, hijack calls as well, and we're off to the turn. In the words of the great Viffer, nine ball, corner pocket. We turn top two pair, we check it on over to the button. She leads out for $100. There are a lot of draws out there now, and I know that she's probably not going to go for thin value on the river with a hand like king, queen, or ace, queen. So I think just shoving here is probably the best option. I go ahead and jam for about $600. The hijack makes the call as well, and the button is deep in the tank thinking about what to do. Eventually she makes the call, the hijack's got ace jack of clubs, the button's got ace queen offsuit, we just need to fade a club or an ace for a very large pot, fortunately the dealer obliges, it's a complete brick on the river and we scoop in yet another nice pot, what a great run we're on so far tonight. After several limps, I am in the small blind. I look down at pocket tens. I make it 35 to go. All three players call, and we're four ways to the flop. One ten. One ten. We flop bottom set on king jack 10. All the players in the pot are really quite loose and aggressive, so I'm really not worried about ace queen. They might have queen nine, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it if we need to. There are so many pair plus straight draws and top pairs and gut shots and all that sort of stuff that's going to call. We've got a very clear bet. The first limper is a really active fun player, and he looks as if he's ready to raise and play for it all, which I'd be more than happy to do, even though we're $1,300 effective. Unfortunately, at the last second, he folds every Everyone else snap folds, and I show my pocket tens and drag in another pot. In this hand, once again, we're in the straddle. I don't know if you guys are seeing the trend that I'm seeing, but I think I straddle a bit too much. We look down at 5-4 offsuit. It's been open in MP by a very loose, very active, I'm going to say it, it's a spewy player that's opened. 
I am in the straddle of 5-4 also this is really really loose but I want to play pots with this player particularly heads up I wouldn't call a hand like 6-4 offsuit or 3 deuce offsuit or 9-7 offsuit but something like 5-4, 6-5, 7-6 I think I can just about make it profitable but only versus this type of player. 325. 325. After flop and turn go check check, we make our straight on the river. I put out a very sneaky river check. My opponent bets $50 and I go for as much money as I think I can get out of him. I make it 325. He calls very, very quickly. I turn my hand over and he taps the table and we scoop in yet another pot. Thank you. 225. 225. Next hand we're playing 5-5, five, five. there's no straddle in this hand and the loose aggressive player decides to open to $40 which is a pretty big open considering there's no straddle. MP makes the call and I look down at a pair of kings in the small blind and squeeze it to $225. Action folds back round to the early position player and he says that this is his time, he goes all in for $1045 more. I of course make the call, over to you dealer. It's not the best 5 cards to see when you're holding pocket kings, however my opponent is somewhat hesitant to turn over his cards. He eventually shows that he had pocket jacks. We turn over our pocket kings and once again we're scooping in a very large pot. We're on a fantastic heater right now. Long may it continue. In this next hand, once again, I'm in the straddle. I've got Jack Nine of Spades. There've been a few limps. The cutoff makes it 35. The small blind calls. I call, and the first limper decides to limp raise to $105. The cutoff makes the call. The price is just too good for us. I know we're up against a very strong hand a lot of the time here, but we're deep enough to make this profitable for sure. If we flop two pair or make a straight or a flush, we can win a lot of money. Very easy call for us, and we go three ways to a flop. This is exactly the type of flop we were looking for. We flop top pair and a flush draw, which means any jack, any nine, any spade, very likely to win us the pot. The flop goes check, check, check. We break on the turn, which again weirdly goes check, check, check. On the King River, we somehow miss. Can we win one pot today? Just kidding, obviously. We check, and the limp raiser makes $105. We both fold very quickly. A lot of outs there, but you can't win them all. It's been good. Next hand the straddle is on, we're under the gun plus one with King 10 offsuit and we raise to $30. This is a little bit loose, however the game is very passive. Generally in passive games you want to open wider than your standard opening range and in looser, more aggressive games you tend to favour opening a slightly tighter range than you normally would just so you can exploit the player pool. We open to 30, it falls round to the small blind and he does decide to 3-bet but he makes it $70, really small 3-bet, we're in position, we go ahead and make the call. <laughs> My opponent checks the flop on over to me and I decide not to stab this hand. The reason for that is that I think we can stab this board really wide, but I think we tend to favour a lot more hands that have got better equity. We've got flush draws, backdoor flush draws, straight draws, gut shots, even a hand like Jack 10 of Diamonds makes a better stab than this because it can turn equity on an 8 or a 9, so I decide to check this one back. The turn is an ace and my opponent checks again, a little surprised by that, really easy check back for us. River is a 10 and my opponent leads out for $85. I am completely readless here. We haven't played any hands with this player. I'm really not sure what to do. I think I've made a bit of a nitty fold in hindsight. I guess we just got to go ahead and call the $85 and see what he's up to. Remember, he's made a really small pre-flop raise, which doesn't sort of indicate he's the best player at the table. So I don't really like my fold in hindsight here. I think we just got to stick in the call and see what happens. Yeah, go. This next hand is a bit of a strange one. There's a lot of preflop tanking going on with minimal bet sizes. I have cut all that out for your viewing pleasure. EP is open to 25. MP has made the call. I am in the hijack and I call with king nine of spades. The small blind calls, the big blind calls, and we go five ways to the flop. After yet more bizarre flop tanking, the original Razor bets 25, MP calls, I've got top pair good kicker, I call as well, and we go three ways to the turn. BL. 
Early position checks and MP takes his sweet, sweet time before betting out $50. It's a pretty small bet in relation to the size of the pot. We're not loving life here, however, we could be ahead, and even if we're not, we're getting really good odds to improve on the river. I think our call is just about okay here. Onto the river and MP replicates his turn strategy by betting $50 into two people on the river. It's a really strange size, it's a really small bet, our hand is kind of strong in relation to the size of my opponent's bet, so I think our raise here is completely fine. I go for what feels like thin value but I think it's a pretty mandatory raise, I make it $260 to go. $260. My opponent thinks for about 15 seconds before making the call. I triumphantly turn over my cards and my opponent rolls over. I'm not going to tell you. Let's do a little giveaway. 100 bucks to anyone who can guess my opponent's whole cards. Let me know in the comments below. Once again, I'm in the straddle. Action folds round to the small blind. He opens to $35. Big blind calls as well. I think if we're out of position here, even versus one player, this is a pretty easy fold. But when we're closing the action and also closing the action post flop, I think this is just about okay. I go ahead and make the call. Action checks to me on the flop. I don't really see any reason to stab here. We've got middle pair and a backdoor flush draw. I'd much rather just check back and keep the pot small. On the turn, the small blind leads out for $55. Pretty easy call for us. We go ahead and make that call. On the river, my opponent checks to us. I check back. He announces we win. He rolls over 8-3 of spades and we scoop in another small pot. In this next hand, I am in the cutoff with King Queen Offsuit. There's been a limp. I isolate to 25. The button calls a very tight player in the big blind calls as well. The limper folds. We go three ways to the flop. 60. I bet $60 on the flop, only the button calls, she leaves herself $40 behind, I mean if I'm her I'm just going all in here but each to their own, on the turn I put her in for her last $40, she absolutely snaps me off, she's got ace king, nice hand. Next hand we open pocket queens in early position, the straddle is on so we make it 35, cut off calls, button calls and small blind calls as well, we're four ways to the flop. It's not a brilliant flop for our range, and being honest, four ways is not a great flop for our hand either. All the players in the hand can have sets, they can have pair plus straight draws, flush draws, all those sorts of hands that we're not doing brilliantly against. I think this is a very clear check for us. It checks right into the button and he stabs for $100. The small blind makes the call, very easy call for us as well. 175. After more excessive tanking, the turn eventually goes check, check, check. The action's on me on the river, and I bet $175. I'm really not sure about this size in hindsight. In-game, it kind of felt like if I go bigger, it's really tough to get caught by worse. Both my opponents don't have very strong ranges here. After the turn goes check, 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 and the small blind checks to us on the river. I think I'm really unbalanced when I use this size on the river. It's really tough for me to find any bluffs. But I'll be honest, in a live setting, in this sort of game, I really don't care about being balanced. I want to choose the most optimal sizing and I think this is the best sizing to get paid. After about 30 seconds the button makes the call, the small blind lets out a sigh, he goes deep into the tank, he's leaning over the table, talking to both of us, giving his thought process out loud, he was a very charming, very funny guy, it was really a lot of fun to play with him, eventually he does make the fold, I announce queens, the button taps the table and we drag in another nice pot. Queens. Nine to four or something? That was a fun hand. four. On to the last hand of the night. Action folds round to the cutoff. He's a very friendly player. I've been chatting away to him all night. He opens to 20. I look down at pocket aces on the button and make it 75. A little bigger than you'd normally expect, but we're about 1500 effective to start the hand. So generally, when you're deeper, you want to choose a slightly larger 3-bet size. I make it 75. He calls off to the flop. It's a really safe flop for our hand. I bet $80. My opponent quickly calls off to the turn. 
There are a lot of pair plus straight draws, pair plus flush draws, top pair type hands that I can get value from. So when my opponent checks, I continue to bet here. I bet $230. 230 $230. Before I've even finished counting out my own bet, my opponent has snap jammed the turn. He's gone all in for about $1,300. This is normally a sign of strength on its own, but when you factor in just how passive this player has been, this is a really easy fold. I give him a little 20 or 30 second sweat just to think about it myself, but there's no chance I'm paying this off. I think about it for a few seconds and go ahead and make the fold. Fold. Can you show the bluff for the camera, sir? One time. Will you show the bluff for the camera? Is that the bluff? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> no, I feel really stupid. <laughs> nice. Not long after that ace's hand, the game was breaking and I decided instead of looking for a new table, I would lock it up for the night. We won $2,978. I ran really well. It's really important to acknowledge that. But what a great night vlogging at the Hustler Casino for the first time. I cannot wait to go back. Thank you very much for joining guys, I really hope you enjoyed the show. I want to talk about a couple of different things before we finish up here. First things first, I'm well aware that I've played four sessions and I've won four sessions in this vlog. That is purely coincidental. If I take my camera out of the table and I lose 25 grand, y'all will see it. It's not the fact that I'm like hiding my results and only vlogging winning days etc. I can't wait till I have a big losing day and I get to dissect all the hands with you guys. It's purely coincidental that I've run really well as you've just seen, I've run really well every time I pull the camera out. I probably should pull the camera out every time I play then I'd be a millionaire in no time. Uh, secondly, my results for the trip so far are on screen right now. As you can see, we've had one losing day. Uh, it was a pretty big one, but the rest of them have been nice, consistent winning days. So we're about even for the trip so far. Uh, it's one long grind. I'm in America for 89 days and you can't get hung up on one losing day or a break even week or anything like that. The variance in live poker is astronomical. Um, so I'm not sweating it, it's, I'm, I'm having a lot of fun so far, it's really nice to get back into the live streets. Uh, and like I said earlier in the video, hopefully we'll have another episode very soon, so stay tuned for that. Until next time guys, thank you so much for watching, take it easy.